I recently replaced this potentiometer um, in a Fender Stratocaster guitar and it's the volume pot. It's 500k pot and the problem was when you turn the knob on the potentiometer up it was very erratic. It might turn the volume up slowly, it might, go, might not turn it up and then suddenly it would jump up to full volume. So I, I changed it out but I got to thinking about looking at this pot and trying to figure out what was wrong with it. This potentiometer called a pot. And what I noticed was, and just physically looking at it, was that this terminal here, which is very commonly just bent up and soldered to the housing of the potentiometer, and that's done just to provide a grounding point since in the circuit this lead on the potentiometer goes to ground. You just bend it up and solder it to the pot housing and then some other leads are soldered onto the potentiometer also to make it a common point. And what I noticed was that that particular lead had been stressed when it was bent up and soldered down so that it, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it moves up and down and it's apparently broken a connection inside of it. But I thought it might be interesting to actually take this apart and see how it's all connected up inside and what it looks like for anybody that wants to know and maybe has not ever taken one apart to look inside of it. Uh, just a little background. This is how a potentiometer is wired up kind of schematically. The center lead is connected to a wiper. This is to the outside leads is connected a resistive wire. So if this was a 500k pot, it would measure between this terminal, the right hand terminal and the left hand terminal, 500 kilo ohms. I say 500 watts, I meant 500 kilo ohms, 500k. And so um, between the center conduct conductor and the right one would the resistance would be determined by the position of this wiper. If this wiper were pointing up here towards the right hand terminal, the resistance would be zero because it would be a direct short between this terminal and that terminal. At the same time the resistance between the left hand terminal and the center one would be 500 K because current would have to travel all the way through the resistive wire all the way to that contact. Same thing would work in the position if you turned it all the way the other way. So that's the way it really works. And what I'm going to do is to take this pot and I think if I just um, break or bend these ears, we'll be able to take it apart and have a look inside. Okay, I got those ears pried up so that we should be able to pull this apart now. So let's see what we see inside here. Okay, here's the outer shell. Looks like it's got some grease in it. Yep, got a little grease there. And Let's see, we turn it, it turns like this. So obviously I need to pull this apart. I may have to do a little more surgery on this thing. So there's a couple of ears here that would take this apart. So Let me grab a screwdriver and see if I can do that. Okay. Try 
the other one also. I'm surprised at how much lubricant it has inside of it. Kind of. Um, actually, there's a lot in that right here. Let's see if it will pull apart. Oops, there's another. See that one. Ouch. Jabbing in my finger. That felt good. That one needs to come up a little more. Sometimes when you take these things apart, because you want to see what's inside, you can endanger your fingers. No, it's not yielding yet. I'm bending these far enough, I think. A little looser though, maybe. Uh, okay, so what I noticed was that there was a lock ring on the shaft here. So I took that off, the lock ring, I tore it up, but it doesn't matter. I wasn't going to reuse this anyway. And then once I did that, I could pull this off. And then here's the terminals. We'll see how those are attached in a second. But then he and here is the wiper assembly. And this is the resistive part that I was talking about. This is the resistive part. And um, this is the part that sometimes gets dirty and then the wiper doesn't make good contact and it gets scratchy and by spraying a little contact cleaner in there, uh, it can clean that up. Then on this one, as I was telling you, the terminal was loose. I'm trying to see how it's actually fastened to it. And I think it's just um, a press fit. And you can see how this one sprung up a little bit. So. If it had been tighter, it would have made contact with that. But I think it's just a mechanical connection right there. There's no soldering or anything like that. The center one is a continuous piece into this ring. And both of these outer ones are just a contact finish. It's crimped on there. That's, I guess that would be the term. It's crimped. And this crimp has become loose because when it was bent up to be soldered, is a common point on the uh, can of the pot it broke loose maybe you can see that it's very loose in there that was the problem so let's see how the, if we can figure out how this wiper works oops so this is the way it works the little dimpled area here, these two pieces here, you see they have a temple parts that stick down. Rides on this uh, center part, which is connected to the center terminal. So that's always making contact. And then these two spring looking items up here, they ride on the resistive surface. So if you turn it this way, the center is essentially connected closer and closer to the left terminal as it's turned counterclockwise. And then as it's turned clockwise, the center is connected closer and closer to the right terminal as it's turned clockwise. So that's really what it is. It's kind of an interesting little assembly here to accomplish what we were looking at on the schematic. So the whole problem with this one was it was not worn out as I suspected it might be. It was just the mechanical connection right here. So for what it's worth, that's the way a potentiometer works. And um, I hope it was interesting to you. It was interesting to me. It didn't damage my fingers at all. And uh, so if you like this video, found it of some value, please like it. 
uh, share it to any friends you have, and subscribe to my channel, please, if you would. Thank you.